Hello everyone and welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is episode 9. Last time, we snuck into the docks. We did indeed sneak into the harbour, which was good. And we had a chat with Leo, and it was a bit of a brief one. You know, we got some good stuff happening. We internalised some thoughts. We got a lot of skill points. We've been progressing the game. It was a late sleep. It was a late one for Harry, but we've woken up at 7.30 on day three. It is a brand new day, and I'm ready to get back into it. Uh, first things first, I think we do have a skill point, so what I want to actually do is I would like to throw that one into um, thinking about a new thought, and what I'd wanted to do for a while now is um, I think this one is the one that I wanted to do. We've got three hours to do that. It does take our visual calculus down, but we're going to do um, Mazovian socioeconomics. So I'm going internalize, to internalize that thought, okay? So we've got another one. We've got another thought processing for us today. At the start of the day, when thing is like all hip and cool and happening, which is which is great, we lost our expression. We looked into the mirror and we said... Break that grin. And now his smile and optimism is gone. It's just us now. A sad old man. So, let's see what we uh, let's see what we have to do. Uh, we gotta investigate the special borscht. While we're here in the whirling and rags, I feel as though it's a probably a good idea for us to do that. So let's leave. And we will uh, we'll check it out. So we're gonna go down go down the stairs. Whirling in Rags music intensifies, and uh, we're going to see what it's all about. Ooh! We have... We have visitors! Good morning, Kim. The smoker on the balcony is in Whirling, and we have two RCM-related people here. Let's speak to Kim first. This is interesting. Yes. Hey, okay. Um, anything about what's going on here, Kim? What about me? Okay. Good. Mm. What do you want to know? Ooh. The pissing competition. The pissing competition, right. That is another task we had because of inspecting the scene. It is, that is something that I need to remember to keep in mind for... Um, when we are talking to people is they can have grayed out options, but then I forget that they can also go into previously unexplored options. I need to remember that. So now that we've inspected the scene, I want to know more about this pissing competition that you mentioned. What's there to say? It's just stupidity. What kind of stupidity? The cop kind. Our precincts can't decide if Martinez is part of Jamrock or the Industrial Harbor. Yours or mine, as if we somehow own parts of the city. Typical street gang mentality. So we've let the Union make a mockery of law enforcement here. And now it's come to its natural conclusion. Ah, so this is a struggle over who runs Martinez? Well, sort of. It's less a matter of who gets to police Martinez than who has to. It's an orphan district, in other words. Mm. I think the dispatch desk just told both our stations about the hanging. There was quite a brouhaha at the 57th, I can tell you that. <laughs> Time to settle it, they said. Cop off. But I assure you, I am not their finest or toughest with 102 cases solved. What I am is least interested in a pissing competition. Okay, Kim. So, he volunteered to represent the 57th, but not out of competitiveness. On the contrary. Okay. What's special about Martinez? Martinez? Nothing. It's just a puddle at the end of some drain pipe. No one cares about this place. They care about sports. Most of our colleagues don't even know how to get here. North of the interchange doesn't exist. A tremble comes over you. Another after effect of ethanol poison. <laughs> Feels like leaves do when they rustle in the breeze. Somewhere far away, below the turbine. The 41st and the 57th. The lieutenant was right. It's not about who gets what's north. It's about who doesn't? Okay. I wonder what this says about me, that I was sent by my station. Hmm. Mm, he raises an eyebrow, thinking it best to let you make the next move. 
an apocalyptic omen sent by my people. Can you guess my message? I don't have an unbelievable kill count. I've got a kill count of three. A lesson in style. The finest we have are hero cops and to outperform you in every way imaginable. Oh my god. Um, I love it when there's so many options that are just so damn good to choose from that it's hard to make a decision. Um, Kim has way more style than me. Way more style. Don't be scared, but I think I have supernatural abilities. He opens one hand and looks at it. A moment passes. Which school do you subscribe to? Mambo or Jambo? <laughs> Vivid interior, I see and feel things. Get these strange shivers from being hung over just before a chill whisked down my back. I think I might have both Mambo and Jambo. I imagine strange things and get cold chills too. And which is the one where you have your tie talk to you? I think I, well, I do have both. I definitely do have both. I didn't know that was even possible. It must be a great burden. It's both a burden and a gift. It's good to have uh, an ambidextrous paradetective in a labor dispute. I can see why they sent you. Should we go? So you volunteered to spoil the pissing competition then? Yes. I am an unrepentant spoil sport. The lieutenant appears pleased with this. Okay, enough of the competition then. Tell me something else. Yes, it's a wholly pointless matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. Nice. Pissing competition task complete. He's actually glad it's addressed now. Ooh. Ooh. How did we get two pluses from suicide mentions? Interesting. Um, I'm going to quickly back out. However... I'm going to quickly put my logic points up. So let me just get my logic happening. If I put on my logic glasses and my logic hat, let's try again. Put on my thinking cap and my thinking glasses. 83% yeah. chance. Why did the 41% send me? Look at you. It's because you're a failure. They sent you to slight precinct 57. Look, it, it does make a little bit more sense. What? No! That can't be- Look at me! I'm the epitome of handsome, artistic super cop. That can't be right. Just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late and argues with his necktie. You weren't sent here to win. Kim, what if my precinct sent me on this case because I'm a fuck-up? Like, as a joke? I've considered it. So it's true. It would be immensely ugly of them, not to mention unprofessional. But I also think it's somewhat unlikely. Why is that? I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, who polices Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes, both stations would prefer a win. <laughs> so you are their finest. I am the finest of nothing. Do you really see me as a safe bet? Safe? No. But you are old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what it is yet. But it's there. Okay. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they did, they are in for a surprise. I'm going to convince you there's a sex sexy dark mystery twist in this case one day, Kim. Just you wait. Okay, shall we talk to our new friends? Maybe I should dress for the occasion. Let me put on anything that's a more of a conversationalist type deal. Maybe not half light. Uh, visual calculus. Ah, that gives me less authority. That's we're gonna need something. Suggestion. Electrochemistry. Okay, we've already got spirit decor on this jacket and shivers. Half light instead of electrochemistry, we keep electrochemistry. And then this gives me, yep. Okay. Minus two to cyber warfare. Maybe let me do that. And it takes that to just a minus one. Minus one of the authority and suggestion. A lot of different bonuses. Okay. 
Maybe we could we could probably change the hat. <laughs> cool dude. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Alright. This is the perfect outfit to talk to our RCM friends. The woman in an RCM patrol officer's uniform winces as she notices you. Horse faced woman. I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. Why are you here then? A patrol officer is the lowest rank in the RCM, below lieutenant and sergeant. Patrol officer, lowest rank, okay. Okay. Hold on, you're a patrol officer of the RCM? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm a cop too. I know. Okay. Here's the real deal. Thank you, Kim. You've got my back. I'm on a murder investigation. Are you the cavalry? I'm definitely not the cavalry. Okay. Uh, is everything all right? Why don't you want to talk to me? I don't know. I mean, uh, why would I want to talk to you? I'm confused as to why you would be here. And also avoiding other RCM... people. Okay. Have I wronged you? I've done that to a lot of people. No, you haven't wronged me. It's okay. She shakes her head and breathes out. Okay, fine. Let's talk. What did you want? Cool. Uh, so what precinct are you from? What precinct? <sighs> Just size. Am I from? God, he doesn't know. Fucking deranged lunatic. Ooh, man with sunglasses. The sunglass wearing man pushes through his teeth. Sheesh, okay. You're getting an intellectually unsatisfying vibe from this conversation. Maybe you're doing something wrong. So you're the, you're the police, right? Cool, so am I. I don't... I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, did. Wait, is he police? Me? No. I'm just a man with sunglasses. I like wearing sunglasses inside. Sunglasses and a fucking wig. Okay. Okay. What are you, the police, doing here? I'm just looking out for... No one. I'm just a man with sunglasses. And you are? A horse-faced woman. You're a fucking asshole. Are we done here? What is happening here? What priest? Am I from? Fucking dear. You're getting an intellectually. Okay, unsatisfied. goodbye. What the fuck? You look like shit. Your ruffled face reflects in the man's sunglasses. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. You look like shit, asshole. Honestly. Who the fuck are these people? I know. It's intentional. Like undercover? The woman in the RCM uniform interjects. Well, as far as these guys go, this is one of the best I've seen. I mean, I could swear you're an actual bomb. Look, I really feel like the fishnet vest underneath my RCM coat and the fingerless gloves with the beanie just really ties everything together. Have you seen these shoes? Oh, come on, Jean. It looks like it's been a rough week on him. Okay, so Jean and... I already forgot. Judith? It's not just this week. What do you want? He skins you from head to toe. What do you want? Okay. So this guy is cool. He stands there like a statue, an angry statue, and he does not like you. 58% spirit decor. Kim, who is this guy? Mm -mm. I'm not getting involved in this. Okay. It's not my style, he thinks, glancing at the man in sunglasses and the woman beside him. Oh boy, they're mad at him. No wonder. He just doesn't recognize them. 58%. Call your station. There's something strange about this guy. Figure it out. You know what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. We're, we're locked in this morning. There you go. Tell me the truth. Do you know me from somewhere? Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Then spill the beans, punk. Another life. From where? From another life? Yes. From another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? <laughs> 9,000... 
99,069. 9, 9, 9, I, God, why would you make me want to press 69? God damn it. I'm from the 57th, right? And Kim's from the 41st. I think even in this fictional reality, the 57th would still be my station. The lieutenant makes a little nod towards the man with sunglasses. My condolences. The man with sunglasses replies dryly. Go ahead. Have another guess. Okay. 41st is mine. Okay, okay. That's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. He gives you a long, meaningful look and adds... Somewhere good. Okay. Let's talk more about that hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Okay. He just said okay, but it goes into... Oh, the hypothetical 41. Yeah, let's fantasize about that. I'm not busy. You're not busy. Let's just play around. Okay. So what would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? Like partners in crime, or...? No, because in this thought experiment we are police officers in a police station. We don't do crimes. We're not crime bros. Ah, oh, the crime bros callback. Come on, stop it. Do you have a crime to solve? Oh no, no, no. You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes. And let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing your work. This isn't helping. She says, shaking her head and looking at the man with sunglasses disapprovingly. Okay, who else is in our imaginary police station? Actually, I want to do the relationship again because Let's it has be another crazy. option. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? Well, Kim's cooler than you. I'm sure he's fucking flattered. But Kim is not part of his thought experiment. In this one, we are partners. The lieutenant is silent. Oh. Look, you seem like a bit of a drag. No offense, but I could do better. None taken, my friend. None taken. Let's be honest. There's been some purely fictional talk in our imaginary station in regards of who'd even be worthy of your partnership. And the conclusion is that a man with your caliber should form his own one-man policing unit. Anyone else would just slow you down. Okay. Uh, who else is uh, in our imaginary police station? You're not going to believe this, but... Police officers. Yes, sir. Solving crimes. Holy shit. Bad guys and... And get this. And not getting that drink on at two o'clock. Just some regular boring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you. The far out son of Lung. Who's the far out son of Lung? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. you. Do you want to tell me more about him or her? Not even a little bit. Okay. It's an urban myth about an officer who is so far undercover he can't remember who he is. As I said, just an urban myth. You are not the son of Lung. Oh, so far undercover he can't remember who he is. That's crazy. Okay, yes, you get the joke. Leave it at that. Okay, I can't imagine it anymore. <sighs> Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. His grey eyes suddenly flash above the glass frames. They feel sad. Alright, I got some questions for you. I'm a cop. About what? You don't look like a cop. You know what you look like. Like Guillaume de Million. <laughs> No, you will not start blabbering about that asshole. <laughs> now you answer some questions for me? No. Why not? Because it's not my job. Why don't you go and fucking do yours and solve this damn hanging? If you don't want to answer questions, maybe you want to hear me say things? Actually, I don't want to hear you say things. Why? I'm immensely entertaining to talk to. Come on, Jean. Okay, say things. I want to hear you say things. Good, I'm so happy you want to hear me say things. Hear that? He wants you to say things. Say one. I'll say one. Suddenly, out of nowhere, case-related things start popping up in your head. I have a little problem. The person who was hanged is still hanging there. Uh, I still haven't taken him down. You're not shitting me, Milan. I can smell it all the way here. The whole town stinks. Dick Mullen. We're getting to it. 
there have been complications. Wait, can you maybe help? I would love to, but I'm busy fucking off and not cramping your style. And that might cramp it, you see? Helping you. <laughs> so I feel like the lead up to coming to this place was me saying, fuck all you guys, I'm a one man cop show and I can do this on my own, went off and had a train wreck of getting drunk for three days. And now I'm paying for decisions that my character has made before that way he's like, nope, I would cramp your style. <laughs> Why am I even telling you these things? I don't know. Why are you? He gives you an odd look. It's like you felt it would be intellectually stimulating and would lead somewhere. A custom even? Strange. Oh my god, there's more. You want something more? What is it? Well, let's talk about the hanged man again. Okay, why not? Let's do the old thing over again. We're not wasting time. There is no time. Time is what you make of it, my friend. I'm doing this investigation. A man is hanged. So, do you know who hanged him? Not yet. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. I don't know. Oh my god, there. Uh, bye. Watch out for yourself, loser. That voice, so very familiar. Did you hear it when calling to your station and reporting your badge missing? Ooh. Wait, your voice. I recognize it. Oh really? I wonder where. I lost my badge recently. When I called it to report it missing, you were there. That's the where you remember me from? Maybe. Okay, then. It's probably a coincidence. People sound alike. Goodbye. Okay. Okay. The man with the sunglasses and his hypothetical Station 41. Weird, right? I know. Super weird. There's something missing here. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy, and you'll probably get laughed at, but still. I really like the fact that it goes and mentions put our finger on, because we're a collective consciousness over here. Um, I was thinking the same thing. I should just ask him if we're from the same station, which I already have, though. Yes, just cross it off the list. It's probably not true, though. Hell yeah. There's no way. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's not like it's a task or anything, though. We don't even have a Wednesday task yet. Crazy. Um, okay. Weird, weird conversation. That's not how I expected that to go. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. Nice. Okay, we can try suggestion again. This is the retry on the white check, so... 83% chance, less worried about her husband, and has the green 8 pen. 83%, let's go! There's really no point in manipulating anyone. She'd be only too pleased to tell you about her work. Go on and ask. Hey, Lena, I'd, I'd like to hear about some of the cryptics you've studied. Uh, the cryptids you've studied. Could you just tell me about a couple of them? Oh, I'd be delighted. Truth be told, I could really use the company too. Hmm. One cryptid. Not a couple. One. This won't turn into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. Okay, Kim. Just one little cryptid. Promise. He nods and assumes a waiting posture. Cryptids, cryptids. Let's hear about all the interesting cryptids. Ooh, tough choice there. Okay, if we're asking for one, is that a cryptid on this pen you gave me? Take out the pen she gave you. Oh, that's actually quite cool. Let's do one that's related to the pen. Yes. It's the kind green ape. Half war story. Half undiscovered species in the genus Homo. War story? Yes. It was reported by soldiers in South Safra during the war. The kind green ape would visit bunkers during the night, healing wounded soldiers with its saliva. Oh. Okay. And there, there was something about an undiscovered subspecies of man? Indeed, there is. It's our closest relative among the cryptids. Same taxonomic family, different genus. Which is to say, the kind green ape is a species with which we share a common ancestor and that evolved parallel to our own. Just like your partners. I'm pretty sure Kim is the same species as us. 
to suggest otherwise is stupid. The lieutenant looks at you, pleasantly surprised. Oh, no, I didn't mean to imply that Saolites are inferior to us in many ways. You are superior. For example, your earwax doesn't have a foul odor like ours does. A tremendous evolutionary advantage, I'm sure. But perhaps we've had enough speculative biology for today. Oh, but I can ask about the others. Kim... Kim, you're gonna have to keep that waiting posture, I'm sorry. What's the biggest cryptid? Hey, you promised you'd only ask about one cryptid. The fact that he chimes in... That's... I, I love how this game really pulls you up on things. Okay, right, okay, we can move on for now. It would be dishonorable to to renege on the, on the promise. I'm glad you see it that way. Did we have anything more to do here? That's all for now. I'm gonna ditch you later, Kim, so I can hear about those cryptids. We'll make it work. All right. I'm gonna have to investigate the special borscht, right? The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Leo says you're friends with Mananya, is that true? The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Okay. Then he falls silent again. Okay. Uh, what is in that borscht you're making there? Point to the large pot. The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. Yes! Borscht need more vodka? Ah, uh, <laughs> he's asking if it needs more vodka. He picks up a bottle from the shelf. Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Yeah, it's borscht, baby. Vodka borscht! I love it, Bratan! Turn it the fuck up and then ask for some yourself! <laughs> Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea. Honestly, the place is a powder keg. Uh, yeah, because we could end up having some even further alcohol-fueled mess. Ah, uh, oh, it doesn't, yeah, like, it, logic, you you have one this time. I'm going to turn my fingers uh, counterclockwise. No, no vodka. Cut it. The cook gives you a long, disappointed look, then turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. Okay. Stay masculine. We did it, baby. Uh, that was that completing the that completes the special borscht. It does indeed. No vodka for them today. Do um, you have anything for me, Gart? Can I help you? Okay, it's just about the gig. Uh, not the gig. About the um, the bill. All I heard was one of these guys talking about. Um, Monica's titties being big, apparently. Uh, Smoker on the balcony is here. Hi, Jandam. Another rendezvous. There he is again. The Smoker on the balcony, right here in the whirling in rags. Hello. Adjust my tie. You're here. I am. So are you. What brings you here? He's so different. What is it about the way he carries himself? All right, that's a composure. 28% though. What are you doing here? Admiring the atmosphere. What about you, officer? This is where I'm going to go down in history. I'm going to sing karaoke. Really? Well, I look forward to that. <laughs> um... Admiring the atmosphere. And then I can ask some other ones. What about you, officer? I'm here to kick some ass and solve the case I'm working on. Well, here's to you. Okay. Tell me again about that muscular type who came to investigate the crime. Oh yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. Ah, what did you tell him? Nothing. That I didn't see anything. And he believed you? Why shouldn't he? Did you tell him about your friend? What friend? Your Sunday friend, the witness. No, I don't think it came up. Okay. What did he look like? Muscular, handsome, strong, 
Like one of those military types. Okay. Was he alone? Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. Ooh, we have we got fancy technology. Okay, his earpiece. Yes, you know those tiny speaker microphones that fancy security guards sometimes wear. What was he saying? Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. Hmm. Besides muscular, did he have any other identifying traits? Oh, uh, let me think. He had an accent. He sounded like one of those mercenaries. He sounded vaguely Oranese. No, not vaguely. Scratch that. He sounded definitely Oranese. Okay. Thanks for the information. Sure. Anything else on your mind? I met your Sunday friend. You did? And how did you like him? You're right. He was magical. Magically bureaucratic. I told you, he can be very useful. I guess that's the charm of powerful people. Who is he? A visitor from the first world. He's not like you and me, gendarme. He can always return. <laughs> return where? To his opportunities in Occident. Sir Leclay, still, his coming and going brings some life to the village. Or is it just money? I don't know. He stares at the bar. What are you? You two. Friends, I told you. Sunday friends. Friends who like to get together from time to time. What does it mean? A Sunday friend. <sighs> that he won't be there when times get tough, I guess. Is that even a friend? It is. On Sundays. <laughs> he smiles. Why was he staying at your place in the middle of the night? We're getting personal. He has keys. And he likes the view. To the sea, I mean. I don't want to talk about other people. I want to talk about you. Mm hmm? What about me, gendarme? 28%. Give me a Bye -bye, sec. Gendarme. G give me give me a sec. I got I gotta I gotta up my composure somehow. Okay, so I know that we also have uh now this gives us physique but we don't need we don't need physique I hate that we just have a constant minus two to authority on our um, on this so if we're wielding this we get more inland empire and empathy but a minus two to authority and I've never actually equipped we haven't actually run around equipping this before actually a plus one to inland empire and authority does seem like a pretty d decent thing to carry around, and I don't know why I haven't done that more. Hmm. We might do that. The authority, however, is a, is a bit of a is a bit of a problem. That's on a minus three. That is on a minus three. Now, um, what was the? I've already forgotten because I'm very clever. I've already forgotten what it was that we needed our authority is at zero it was uh shit what was it hang on a minute hi again gendarme composure bye bye gendarme our composure is at four we do not have a skill point nor would i want to spend one right now however our composure is on a plus one our composure is on a plus one already because of the pants. Sorry, the shoes. I don't think we've got anything else. We just have to, we would have to potentially just take the chance on that check and then look back into it again later. Do we I try it? Know. It's a legendary one, 28%. We may retry it. He's so different. What is it about the way he carries himself? Ugh. It's the sports. He's a sports guy. All about that physical prowess and athletic skill. Nothing else. Here. We tried. Bye bye, gendarme. Okay. We will come back to him later. We've got uh, union friends once again, but this time I could talk to. Um, you know what? I'm probably not going to want to have on, con considering the minus three authority. I'm probably not going to want to have this uh, ledger on when we chat to. Um, when we chat to uh, Everat, that probably is uh, is not a good idea. What's the other thing that drops our authority? Uh, the glasses, the logic glasses. Let's put on the visual calculus. No drama. No drama. And then for my undershirt, conceptualization. Uh, that's another minus one on suggestion. 
so probably not. All right, sounds good to me. Um, I think we should talk to Everart. I think I need to ask, is it this group? I think I need to ask for help to get the body down. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. He does not look particularly happy to see you. Um, mm. Incriminating. Now that's a big boy word. <laughs> Fucking the occult vision. Wonderful. Why is there a container belt around the dead man's neck? Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yes. Why? Because we took it from the harbor where we work. Then we went out back and used it to hang him. We did this together all of us until he was dead that's why there's a container belt around his neck that's it game over guys thank you so much for watching the disco elysium playthrough it's over we got the perpetrator uh see you guys next time <laughs> so you just confess to murder god damn right i no these seven honest men have equally come forth. They told you what happened so that you don't waste any more of your time. Um, okay, you murdered him just like that, no remorse. How many people have you sent to the Shays? Ever felt remorse for them? So that's a, that is a legitimate confession then? Shea's Electrique is the method of capital punishment in Revachon under the Coalition. During the Suzerain's reign, it used to be the firing squad. So, like, here's the thing, right? You know, you kind of want to go, oh, maybe not everything's as, as it seems, and but, like, everything is kind of, you know, these guys have been forcefully given a week off for doing some stuff that they shouldn't have done. And... All signs point to yes, but at the same time, is there a sexy and dark mystery? We'll have to find out. Or send them to reunion to rot. For 20 years. For life. He says it as if it were worse than dying. And reunion, what's that? The River Esperance Correctional Facility. A military prison run by the Coalition. Dubbed reunion by the inmates. The origin of the name is unknown. Yes, but these were all bad people, criminals, the, the scum of the earth. Rest assured, lawman. None worse than our guy. He got what was coming to him. So who called the shots that night? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Elizabeth, can you take a step outside, please? Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A shadow of a smirk passes her lips as she tilts her head. There's a choice on who to address. I'm going to address Elizabeth. I don't have to. One of them was more complicit than others. That's for the courts in Le Jardin to decide. Not for the officer making an arrest. Which we all know you won't be. What you can do right now is go back to your station and write a report. No, no. We'll stay here and discuss what happened that night. Damn right we will, Kim. When did this hanging incident occur? You don't have to keep answering his questions. The fixer turns to remind Titus. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. <laughs> How long had you known the victim? Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Okay, Glenn. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Not much with a name like Shanky. Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy? So he came in the same time that Joyce arrived. By the Pines cow, you mean Joyce Messier? The representative for White Pines? The same company you are striking against? The lieutenant pretends to check his notes because he knows. No. I mean the Pines cow. 
the stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? He rubs his chin, pretending to mull it over. Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Why did you kill him? Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out alive in my town. So he was a mercenary, that's it? I am. He stepped out of line. He repeats, jaw clamped shut like a vice. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenin written all over him. ex oranis special forces. Alright, well this makes sense why there would be also be a muscular type asking questions about this one as well if it's uh one of his crew or one of the you know they're part of the same thing look at me look at all this thing don't i look like i've got so much authority and like i could whip out a little bit of a cheeky arrest here against titus game over baby a live grenade right here in our bar okay eugene i can't prove it but i know he was sent by the wild pines they hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Okay, so you killed him and admitted that you can't even prove that he was sent by Wild Pines, bro. How do you even know he was in Special Forces? Because one night, he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm R&E's goddamn Special Forces, and I'm gonna fuck you all! So you took a drunk man's word. Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there? Sang some Oranese paratrooper song and said he's gonna fuck everyone. Okay. We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did. Right there. Like some kind of animal. So you're saying if I sing this amazing karaoke song up there that the uh, just... I might get killed too, just because I sung a song? Sire, the tale is true. Mm. This is a serious violation of the karaoke code. <laughs> right. Besides crimes against karaoke, what did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. He wiped spittle from his mouth. I mean, if if this shit's true, damn, we're gonna we're gonna get a we we're gonna get a weird flip side to the reasons behind this murder. There's a slight unease in him. Suddenly, he regrets mentioning the rape. Well. To kill us all, if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Shit, okay. So, cause to believe hired by Wild Pines came here very aggressively, did some fucking disgusting and vile shit. And then, you know, they went, well, fuck it, we're gonna kill you. All right, Kim, this isn't a sexy mystery, but it is a dark one. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. Started to come in here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of ours mid-karaoke, right there on the stage. Hmm. He grabbed someone? The lieutenant? Ah, oh, Sylvie. The lieutenant is trying to make sense of this flood of information. Yeah, this girl's on the mic. A beautiful girl, young. Gets into the second verse of Love a Lake, the fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. I'm not thinking about Sylvie being the one on the stage. I mean, she might have been, but I'm just thinking of the fact that Sylvie was working at the Whirling. Show me your cunt! Why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle, doesn't even fall down. He shakes his head in disbelief. Was this the same girl who was sexually assaulted, you said? Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? He repeats like a parrot. I don't know, man. I have a bit of respect for these boys. 
There's something odd here. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's... Uh, if, <laughs> it's hard when you get another perspective and you're like, well, this dude who got murdered didn't seem like the most kind gentleman ever. He wasn't necessarily an innocent in this tale. Okay, but who did the sexual assault then? Like, this is a very serious allegation. No. You're not getting a name. That's a Martinez matter. And I'm not discussing it with you clowns. There's nothing you can do for now. He's stonewalling you. Damn. How did you kill him? We hanged him up by his neck. Until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Yeah. Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? Okay. This is where an autopsy would come in handy. You have to work with what you know. Okay. Uh, well, we need more. Did you muffle him? We haven't heard any reports of screams. Titus, you don't have to clarify anything. We overpowered him. Dragged his unconscious body to the tree. Put a noose around his neck. And hanged him till he was dead and steady. It's crazy that Titus is just like, he's like, hey, you don't have to go into this. And he's just like, fuck it, I'm going into it, bro. Then we left him for seagulls, maggots, and you fucks. Make them a bit more uncomfortable first. Then see if it all adds up. Oh, it's a red check for composure. God damn it. <laughs> okay. Wasn't he a trained killer from RNG's special forces? If yes, then how did you manage to overpower him? Probably because he was drunk as fuck. With numbers, asshole. How do you think? You're right, Lizzie. I've done enough explaining here. No, he hasn't. Not yet. Where did this overpowering happen? Weren't you fucking listening? The fucker came to our bar. It happened right here. Okay. It has upped it to a now a 58%. Shanky might be lying. Come on, man. I really want to get this one. Come on. I really want to get this one. Come on, let's go! Composure! Things aren't quite right here, are they? Actually, oh my god! They're admirably, surprisingly composed. I'm so sick of this. <laughs> Given how many questions you've logged their way. Mm. Oh man. Failing these. Failing a red check feels quite tough. <sighs> Gotta roll with it. Gotta roll with it. They're admirably, surprisingly composed. They're, they're solid in what they did, right? All of them? Maybe one of them is fidgeting, cracking under the pressure? Well, this one. But he's always fidgeting, so don't get your hopes up. Damn. I have other questions about the lynching. Like what, copper? Why don't I just arrest you? Step closer to Titus. We're gonna get ourselves killed in a minute. Yeah, lawman. Why don't you? It's almost an anthropological sight, watching him try to assert dominance over you. Not in the arresting mood? His mean little eyes come alive with hatred. By your side, the lieutenant keeps his hand away from his holster. You hear the nylon of his coat hiss as he steps closer. Kim? Easy. Walk back from the provocation. They're armed, and they outnumber us. The lieutenant tries to establish eye contact with you. Yeah, they outnumber us, but like... Okay, let's just... Alright, let's just talk. Wise move. You made the right choice there. Now make another one and get the fuck out of our booth. We're not gonna do this again. So what are we gonna do now? Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. We have to prove our authority to Titus. That's a task. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. There's still a dark mystery to be solved here. A 
I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first degree murder. Mm. Even if it is a group responsibility, we are going to look into this. Yeah, the sheer composure and like honesty of this group was just like caught me off guard that I'm like, oh, we're just really at this point in the story where they're just like, yeah, hell yeah, we did it. Good luck with that. You've Great. heard everything a rent -a cop is going to hear from us real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten. Thank you, Titus. Rent a cop. So that's what this is about. He doesn't see you as his equals. Mm. Forget about their games. You've mapped out the characters. Reading the footprints in the yard should be easier now. Ah, oh, okay. Footprints, okay. Wow. So this is the authority check. Weak when you first met. It is, a, it is one that we can retry, which is good, but that's an established authority. It's a godly check, baby. I found someone who saw the hanging. A witness. A witness? You ain't got shit. The locals would never come to you with this. That's just Koptakti status. Next, he's gonna tell you one of us already roll on the others, and he's in witness protection. My witness isn't a local. Well... Let's hear it then. Who is your mystery fella? He's not alarmed by the sudden appearance of a witness, but he is surprised. This goes without saying, but nonetheless, don't give out his name. Imagine just going right into that. <laughs> Who he is, is irrelevant. It's like you said, Al. Copper's coming up with this on the spot. There is no witness. I've seen this shit a million times, Titus. Fly fishing. They are desperate. Tell us, Copper. What wacky claims did he make? Well, the witness said he saw two people of um, Areopagate uh, descent. Terrible pronunciation, I know. And, and one mesk. Areopagite? <laughs> Boss, I think he's trying to say me and Theo. Well, yeah. What is confusing you? Eugene, Theo, and Elaine were there, too. I already told you. We were all there. Okay. The witness said the hanging went down very quietly. No shouting, no commotion. It's you assholes that feel the need to go around like a fucking brass band. The Hardy Boys are dead silent. Yeah. It's like they put cowbells on you before they send you to the streets. What's with the cowbells, policemen? <sighs> Damn. They wormed their way out of it, somehow. Try something else if you can. Well, the witness said it all looks like a surreal play. That means absolutely nothing to me. Sounds like some made-up horseshit. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It means the whole scene was long and drawn out, like it was from a film. What is this fella's problem? Sorry we didn't make it more action-packed. It wasn't the first thing on our minds, you see? Okay. Shanky. It's Shanky, right? I thought there's something wrong about the lynching story. Now I know there was. You don't know shit. I know you are lying, Shanky. He writes in his notebook. You didn't break this wagon fort, but you did manage to rattle the people inside a bit. Okay, actually nothing. Great witness. Found a witness plus one still keeps it at three. God damn, I'm gonna take off now. Imagine getting this imagine getting this role immediately. It feels like we'd skip a bunch of like work. <laughs> I'm gonna take off now. God damn. What a what an encounter. That's uh yeah. We've got a we've got a lot to we've got a lot to think about with that one, I think. We'll see we'll see how we go. So let's actually chat to, to Lizzie. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? Are you Lizzie, Elizabeth, Miss Beaufort? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy. Even though she has excellent control over herself, something moved behind her eyes in the way she stands, in her face. You caught her off guard. Push her some more. Easy Leo told me about you. He likes to, likes to talk a lot. You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. 
You are here to question these men. You set the pace and the topic of these conversations here. Establish that. Man, this is going to be an authority game with these two, and I have not much of it. I'm glad I'm not wearing my ledger right now. A man like Easy Leo could have said anything. Do not be restrained, sire. Okay, do not be restrained. He said, uh, Mr. Everett sent you to law school. I represent the union and these men here. Don't make this personal. A very minor victory. Okay. I said, even though you caught her off guard, you are not. You set the pain. A man like Easy Leo could have said anything. Do not be restrained, sire. He said you were in debt to Mr. Clear. I represent the union. Oh, okay. It's, uh, is, is it going to be the same every time? You are not. You said a man like easy. He said you're the union fixer. You fix things. I am a legal counsel. Don't make this personal. A very. Okay, I'm going to do the last one now. You are not. You said a man like. He said you're Mr. Everard's um, do et sukyo death machine. He said no such thing. This isn't about me. He said no such thing. Accidentally raises her voice. This isn't about me. Calm down, everyone. Let's stay professional. Dirty tactics, officer. It worked though, didn't it? Maybe we'll talk later. Okay, so that's how that one goes. I wonder where that Sylvie is. I wonder where that Sylvie is. Hmm. Let's try and call Sylvie again. We really fucked that up. We really fucked that up. I'm gonna make sure we put something on that's at least a little bit more for like maybe some suggestion. Um, drama and electrochemistry. Actually, no. Let's keep that one back on. I need. Do I not have anything that gives me a little bit of empathy? Oh, yes, the ledger. The empathy. An inland empire, but not much authority. We're not looking for authority here. I want to be sympathetic, but I don't know. Let's uh, let's let's see. We're gonna tr I'm gonna try and call Sylvie again and see if we can maybe do something Inside, here. You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. This is Precinct 57. How please, may I assist you? Please connect me to Sylvie again. Just a second, officer. Statico! Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Yes, hello? You recognize her voice. Hey, Sylvie, it's the police again. Oh, great. What else do you need, detective? Uh, okay, let's see if we can get some... Let's see if we can get some stuff here. Maybe nicer. You quit your job at the Whirling, why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Why not? Wait, why aren't you discussable? Uh, why aren't you discussable? Comfortable dis discussing it with me? I, uh, let's just say I left because I needed to get away from someone. And get away from whom? You know whom. You think you hear a sliver of accusation in her words. Hmm. Don't be paranoid. She's obviously talking about someone else, not you. I'm still... Ah. Oh. Oof. You mean me? You need to get away from me? I really don't want to talk about this. Let's just forget about this, okay? Huh. Hmm. I won't push you on this. Uh, are you ever coming back to work? Maybe. I don't know. I just know I have to take some time off right now. Okay. No. Not me. Okay, so she didn't call the police. We still haven't figured that one out. But why didn't you call? Didn't the corpse behind your workplace bother you? What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the union already knew about the corpse. Uh, yeah, it's because they did it. But what does this union have to do with anything? No one calls the police. The union would get angry. What do you mean by that? You know, what the union says goes. People listen to them, and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. Do 
Tell me, why exactly did you let a corpse hang in your own backyard for weeks instead of calling us? I... I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Push her further. Show her the error of her ways. No, don't push her. It sounds as if she's about to cry. What others? The other people who live around here. Local people, I... I didn't want trouble. Her voice is resigned and weak. What trouble? You don't live here. You don't understand. Squealing is frowned upon here. Everything is dealt with, well, by the Union, internally. They definitely dealt with this one internally, didn't they? Please, I just didn't want any trouble. I see. Don't worry about it. I understand. You do? Oh. What else can I do for you? Do you know who made the call? No, sorry. I don't. People don't have the money to have So the Union has a phone. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, okay. officer. Yeah, go on. Mike, I might see if I can get some more information about the badge and the gun again. Yes, I know who you are. You're a police officer. The law. Wait, how did you first learn I'm a police officer? You, you told me back in the whirling. <laughs> you told everybody. And so does your badge. I don't need to hear about it anymore. Oh. Real police would have uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? Not my uniform too? God, I really should look into that. Yes, you absolutely ah! should. It's awful that you... I've been gaining so much morale lately that it's it's finally time to lose some for a bit. It feels like you haven't worn yours in a long, long time. Please, no. You were trying to impress some people. Great. Anything else? Uniform. I, I never saw the disco things. Before. Okay. You, had your you hear the call. Anything else I can help you with, officer? We got we got some experience. We got some some more stuff there. I wasn't, you know, that was a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to ask if we've heard back from the ICP about the serial number. Yes. The armor was produced by Fairweather in their facilities in Betancourt, sur la clé in 42. It was part of a special order for Corps de Pharmacie. A security firm contracted to protect the interests of Orani pharmaceutical companies in the Seminine conflict. Ah, pharmaceutical companies in the Seminine conflict. So, it seems the armor went to Seminine. That's where the paper trail ends, though. Even the firm has proven difficult to track. Corps de Pharmacie has been renamed several times over in the years since the armor was issued. Do you know what it's called now? The most recently registered firm that the ICP has been able to connect to the CDP is a military contractor called Trinel. And the one before it was down well. I think they might be the same contractor. Military contractor. Armor like this isn't mass produced. It would have probably been fitted. Perhaps there's a record of who signed for this particular suit of armor. First, has the firm continued to work for pharmaceutical companies through all these name changes? Hard to say. The client list is rather diverse and incomplete. The only constant seems to be that the mercenaries are always deployed in third and fourth world countries. Okay. A suit of armor like this would have been customized to, to fit the wearer. There must be a record of the person to whom it was issued. Yes, but the ICP tends to be reluctant to sell private sector records. I could try to talk them into it, though. This is a fun challenge for her. An opportunity to contribute beyond doing her job by rote. She'll gladly put in the extra effort for Team RCM. Yes, thank you, officer. I really appreciate your efforts in this case. Glad to help. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully I'll have more for you then. Nice. Please connect me to the 41st again. I mean, we could potentially have a bit of an update with them. Let's have it. Let's check in. Let's see. Just a moment, officer. 10 4. Come in, officer. Over. Oh no, not admitting that I've actually lost my gun. Oh man. Do I want to do, do that? We still need to find out what's going on there. Oh, I don't know if we want to admit our failure with the gun. Um, oh. Ten four, sir. Ten four. Orders. Okay, goodbye. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't admit to him that I've lost the gun. That's fine. That was good enough. That was good enough. I've got, I've, we've got stuff that we can do. It's a brand new day, and what I'm gonna do, one of the first things I'm gonna do is we're gonna return this bull that we that we owe. To our lovely friends here. I found your bull. I got you a new one. Officer. Uh. 
goddammit. Pull yourself together, Rene. What do you want? Oh, I don't know if it's a good idea to tell him that I found the guard booth. We kind of literally stole his photo because we probably shouldn't have done it. We can hold out the antique firearm, though. Uh, I found you guys a new bull. What is this? How are you mocking us? This isn't for Pitonk. Now, now. No need to get angry again, Rene. I'm sure the officer tried his best. It's not like there's a bull kiosk here in Martinez. Exactly, and I, and I really did try. Trying is worth as much as is accomplished. In this case, almost nothing. Mm. Fine. You try to write wrong. It's still a gun better than actual nothing. Okay, replace the bull. Gives us a plus one. Is there anything you can tell me about this rifle? It's a Bell McGrave. 4.46 caliber. Breech loading. Revachal made. Good weapon. Accurate and reliable. This one's inoperable. The bolt spring is missing and the mechanism is jammed shut. Still a beauty. Where did you find her? Um, in the basement. In the basement there. Point at the bookshop. I'm not surprised. There are probably lots of forgotten wartime weapons lying around here. Back in the day, everyone had something stashed away. As for the rifle, I don't know what else to tell you. These BM-446s are an antique. No one uses them anymore. The ammunition is impossible to find. I feel like he'll, this is just going to piss him off. Rene, I found your guard booth. Yes. The Debardeur's union pays me to stand with you during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. You weren't there during the night, so uh, what, was, <laughs> what were you doing, bud? I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and... Money is tight. He feels like he has to justify himself for some reason. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. Two-week leave, huh? Why you want to leave? It's a private matter. Nothing to do with your investigation. Mm. You see, officer, René is the kind of man who'd rather die than admit he needs medical assistance or, God forbid, sick it. A real man's man is just gonna ride it out. <laughs> I'm fine, goddammit. Mind your own business. <sighs> it's nothing. Just got to cut back on coffee. So who was working your shift that night? No one. The bus has been on man since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday. Well, there's also been a strike. Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... Look, officer. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. Mostly decorative? The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. He tries to argue. Evra created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabiner's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated Kingsman collecting tear reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. Proudly hold out the tear bag. Get all elderly back in the job market. Such dependency only weakens a man further. Do or die, there is no middle ground. Everard gets it. Big guys looking after the small and everyone working together. I love it. Hmm. I'm pretty sure this is the ultra liberal approach here. I want to. I, I, I want to hold out my tear bag. <laughs> Proudly hold out my tear bag. There's absolutely nothing wrong with tear collecting. It's my side thing too. Oh, I didn't mean to imply there's something wrong with that. I do it too. 
Everyone does it. It's an excellent side thing. Okay, well, I'm going to need everyone to stop doing it because I need it so I can get the money. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Please. Can we conclude the topic of my gout boost now? Because you guys aren't playing this game. I got to buy books to read and stuff. And I got to pay for my house, just my room. He's not going to become an entrepreneur. I saw a picture in there. You were in it. Who's the girl? She is nobody. This is none of your concern. And I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. The lady is Jeanne-Marie Beaulieu. And she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Oh, got it. Thanks. Yes, yes. Uh, like I said, it would be up anyway. So might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. 28% composure. What is it about this old soldier that makes him stand so proud? I really like the composure one because it's the it's not your composure, it's their composure a lot of the time. With uh, with a, quite a lot of the composure checks we've had, and I quite like it. We can retry this one, so I'll try it now. 28%, we feeling lucky on a low check. Whoop. Still, all you see is an old soldier refuses to replace his uniform with a civilian attire. Okay. Anything else I can assist you with, officer? Thank you for your time. Okay. Bull replaced. Now, we've completed a secret task, which is nice. Um, we're going to prove our authority to Titus, which is going to be hilarious. Despite lack of any obvious leads, Joyce's info on the lynching. I still need to investigate the, yeah, I need to investigate the stuff in regards to the lady driver and her lorry. I still need to do that as well. Okay. I feel like there is another point reason to talk to Joyce as well. The worn and beaten wooden plank. Hmm. We can sit on benches. Okay. I don't think there's... Is there any other... information I can get out of... Finding out which lorry is the lorry, you know? Actually, is this a th this isn't a thing, is it? No. Okay. And then everyone's back here again. Oh, this guy. I think this is a no. There's a check. There's a check to do on this guy about the information about the lady driver, right? Looking for something odd. It's half light. Me to fuck off again. Kim's bluff. Saw you snooping cabinet, and it's half light. All right, hold on, hold on a sec. I can, I can fix this. Half light. My gloves. Um, we're on a plus one. This one's minus. Now, if we wanted to drink alcohol, it gives us a plus one to everything physical. But I don't think we'll need to go that far. We've got a skill point. Half light is at four. We really need to up our authority at some point. Looking for something odd? Come to tell me to fuck off again? 58%. Make him tell you what he knows. Men like yes. this only respect two things. Ooh! Strength and fear. Alright. We're, we're about to shout in his face. Show me her lorry right fucking now. The lady driver's lorry. Where is it? Fuck you. I told you. I'm not gonna... There. His voice grows smaller as yours. Jesus. I'm gonna fuck you for the rest of my life. You understand? Fucking... Homo cop. <laughs> A globule of sweat gathers at his brow. Fuck you, man. It's some lorry down there. Green, banged up thing. I don't fucking know who she is. When did she go away? I don't know. I don't even know her name. She just rules with the fleet and acts like a big shot. Some dyke, probably. I haven't even seen her for days. Where exactly is her lorry? Past the monument. Down there. The Green Temple. 
Now leave me the fuck alone, okay? I, there would nothing would please me greater, you fucking potato gem. A small temple by the monument, green. Let's get into that lorry. Nice. Looks like he got his adrenaline up too. Hell yeah, baby, we did it. That's a half light check. That's a success story, my friends. That is a success story. Good shit. All right, so down from the monument. So let's go this way. Good shit. The jam mystery. Search through the lady driver's lorry cabin near the monument. I'm proud. We can progress this. I love progressing things. This game has an actually, like, it has a great sense of progression. I really like, like, having, like, a new day and you can do more things. And sometimes you revisit some previous things and you get more information than you did the first time. And I just really like how it comes together. It's great. This green found A to Z, Contempora, is parked in the shadow of the ruins looming overhead. It's seen better days. Mm -hmm. This must be the one he told us about. Unless he was lying. Nah, I, I got him peeing in his pants. Try to peek in the window. The glass on the side windows is tinted and covered with dust. You can barely make out the shape of the seat and two steering levers. It feels like you're peeking into someone's home residence. Inside it's private, cozy, warm, dusty too. Try the door handle. The door is locked. The handle looks shiny, like it's recently replaced. How are we going to get this open, Kim? Pry bar? Use the pry bar to smash the window. Open it from the inside. Really? This has been hard enough. No need to make it any harder. My favorite thing is the fact that you can try it even without it not being equipped, but it is a very low chance. Okay. Pry bar in my hand. This green found A to Z contemporary. Oh, hang on. That's a physical instrument check. Hang on. That's a physical instrument check. Changing clues. Physical instrument. Uh, which is on just a plus one. So I don't think there's anything that's a, a, a minus to, to it. All right. This green found A to Z Contempora is parked in the shadow. Another fifty-eight. We're in a lot of, we're in a lot of like. Better days. We're in a lot of these challenging ones that are that are in the middle. I'm a beat this wing. With a firm grip, you raise the pry bar. A glint of light catching on the tip. There it is, baby. Pull down the hammer of truth and justice. Release your secrets, Lori Gannon. <laughs> oh, yep, that one makes perfect sense. <laughs> Fuck the police! The window shatters and droplets of glass fly everywhere, shattering over the lorry floor and pavement. Hey, baby. Sato. <laughs> the smell of cigarettes and perfume welcomes you. The cabin inside is plastered with old movie posters. Actresses smile from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. Nice. Okay. Let's admire the posters. These are movie posters featuring starlets from long forgotten films from the 20s, the teens, even the 90s of the last century. Hell yeah. One of them particularly catches your eye. A centerfold of an ingenue attached right above the back seat. There's definitely perfume in the air. It's spicy, with a hint of amberette, wafting through the bitter air of the cabin. Stop and wonder, what's that smell? The remnants of a sweet juniper-scented perfume. Probably Grenade Number 5. Thank you, Perception. Study the centerfold. The actress is draped in a sheath dress, one of her shoulders bared. The faded remains of an autograph run across the poster. She's looking past the camera. A feeling of tenderness washes over you. A longing even, perhaps. And gentle tragedy. Wait, doesn't she resemble someone you know? But you can't put your finger on whom exactly. 
This is Tip Tijon, a starlet from the dawn of cinematography, less known for her talent than her tragic, untimely death. Damn, what happened to her? She wasted away in a drug den called The Door to the River, not far from here on Boogie Street. A mixture of cocaine and morphine. She was afraid of the world and the camera too. All right, enough of the posters. The actresses and the rear actor all smile you a warm goodbye. A radio transmitter is attached to the dashboard and a toolbox sits under the driver's seat. Now let's examine the radio. Looks like the frequency dial is absent. It requires a key to work, but the key has been removed. Likely by the missing lady driver. Okay. Strange. There are so many radio stations saved here. Must be over 100 at least. Why would anyone need so many radio stations? For contacting an entire fleet of lorrymen, for example. This is all shortwave, UW and UKV. Looks like we are dealing with an impressive organizational tool. The nerve center of a huge operation. With quite a range, too. Is there anything we can do with the radio? Uh... Doesn't look like it. It's completely inoperable without the dial key. What else is there? What else is here? The smell of a thousand cigarettes, some dead actresses, and a rusty old toolbox under the seat. Check the pedals. You wedge yourself under the steering wheel to get a better look. Seems like the few tools lying around here, a hammer, a pair of pliers, a rusty wrench have been casually thrown there by the disorganized driver. But one odd detail does catch your eye. A piece of sandpaper has been glued to the throttle. Hmm. Sandpaper adds extra grip. Nice. Looks like the driver has glued a piece of sandpaper to the throttle to offer some extra grip. Sandpaper? A novel technique? Back up into the cabin again. The movie stars are still smiling from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a pull-out toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. Pull out the pull-out toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from the seat. It's empty, except for a folded newspaper. Unfold the newspaper. It's an issue of Petit Ferric from Petit last Ferric. Wednesday. A piece of paper falls out from its pages. Let's pick up that note. It looks like an article ripped out from a radio enthusiast magazine. Complex mathematical equations explain the basics of something called the ULAN frequency system. The ULAN frequency system? I've never heard of that before. I know of FM, AM, UKV, but... Hmm. Push in the pull-out toolbox. The pull-out toolbox slides back into... Close the, the door! You close the rusty old lorry door. Great. I think we got everything. A word, detective? Before we return to Joyce? Okay. All right, we've finished here. Let's quickly debrief and go over what we found, so we don't do it in front of the company rep. Seems like something police would do. What do you think of all this, Kim? Honestly, I'm quite worried by what we've seen so far. The evidence seems to point to a rather extensive and well-organized operation. I'm especially intrigued by that radio transmitter, particularly the sheer number of stations it can connect. Looks like this alleged drug trade casts a wide net. This means it's well-funded. Technology like that, a major player must be financing it. I'm not sure what the ULAN frequencies are all about, but they may hold some significance. Perhaps it's a better way to connect between fleets while avoiding frequency bleed. Or maybe it's used to tap into RCM networks. What about the movie posters? How do they factor into all this? As elegant as they are, I don't think they are relevant to the drug trade. I don't know. Don't be fooled. Desire always plays a role. A lot of women there, especially for a lady driver's cabin. Do you think? Do you think? D do you think? Lebanese cucumber? Yes, well... He doesn't say more. Unimportant. How do you think this is all connected to the Union? We didn't find anything conclusive linking them to the smuggling operation. But somehow, I doubt that Everard Claire would be oblivious to something like this happening right under his nose. My suggestion is, we use it against the Union in any way we can, to our own ends. It's a slippery hill, but we just might be able to pin them down, indirectly, down the road. Okay. Will the RCM open an investigation into this? 
We should return to the murder case, see what Joyce tells us about the lynching. When we are done for the day, I call my station and suggest our narcotics department look into it. Nice, more info from Joyce and the lynching finally. There are more than enough grounds to start an official investigation, sometime later when we are done here. We do not want to get caught in that. Disco Elysium 2. Drug trade boogaloo, what are you thinking? The fact that one hasn't started already gives me pause. An investigation, I mean. Especially if the Madre grouping is involved, and I can't imagine there aren't. It's certainly worrisome. Corruption? All the same, I don't like the idea of internal affairs descending on the matter. That won't help anyone either. Okay. Debrief over? Debrief over. After you. <laughs> nice. Okay, so that's also the truck. Good stuff. It's 10 a.m. I'm feeling productive. On our way back to Joyce, let's check these footprints in the dust, because this white check opened up. I also like that there are white checks that reopen up, not by necessarily leveling up a point, uh, but through circumstance, through playing the game and discovering stuff. Day three is nice. A lot of things are opening up. We can do the water lock, which will get us over to the other side. That woman's still up there. Okay. Have a look. There are several footprints in the mud. Nice. Footprints. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. Here it is, baby. Let's get an exact count. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Where else have we seen a gang of men in work boots? That's right. The hardy boys in the mess hall of whirling in rags. All right, eight pairs. Go over them one by one. One. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 46. Just like Titus was wearing in his booth. This is the big thing. Titus Hardy. The one with the ball cap on his head. This kind of shit is so cool. I love this. This is great. Interesting. Is it? They didn't even bother to change boots. Putting them on the scene is easy. Maybe even... Too easy. Mm. Continue counting. Two. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 44. Either the blonde muscular guy, Glenn, or the young guy with a plectrum around his neck. Three. Hobnailed work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 43. The inked banger, perhaps. Four. Standard work boot. Number 45 or 46. Theo, the old smoker. You think you even see a tiny fleck of cigarette ash inside the print. What else? Five, another standard work boot. Reinforced toes. Number 44. Same as before. Either the musician, Eugene, or the muscle-bound blonde, Glenn. Six, light as air. Same make of boot. But number 41. Small like a rat. Shanky. I should have gotten this earlier. Better late than never, detective. The whole world is dark and the tracks burn in it with strange beauty. Count the rest. Seven. The glowing outline of a standard work boot. Number 46. The imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Fat Angus. Carrying something? And the last one. Eight. Another standard work boot, number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole. The right sole is smoother, more worn. Curious. A missing eighth hardy boy. The right sole is smoother, more worn. A missing eighth hardy boy. Someone who... Someone who maybe leans or uses their right foot more often than another. Seven sets of tracks, right? The Hardy Boys were here. Eight, actually, Kim. That's all? Interesting. Then one of them seems to be missing. Anything else out of the ordinary? Note to self. This would be a good question to ask Titus. Where's the eighth man? 
Okay, light step, number 41 shoe. I'm guessing that's the skinny hardy boy. The one with his front teeth missing. You mean the rat-faced one? Yes, well, he did look a bit like a rat. You're right. Do you think those prints belong to him? Yeah. I could still be wrong, but I'm probably not. A heavy one, 200 kilogram imprint. 200? This could be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up. Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built armored man. Maybe it was a fat hardy boy, the one sitting in the middle. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. You're right, the fat guy from the booth was carrying the victim. Maybe it was a giant. Possibly. I'm taking this one seriously. <laughs> but why? You're thinking, why did they have to carry him? He was unconscious. Yes, they could have used the makeshift stretcher or just march him up to the gallows. Mm. Maybe the carrier wanted to impress his peers, demonstrate his physical might. Maybe the victim wasn't conscious is exactly right. Even easier to carry on a stretcher or between two men. Anyway, it's for future consideration. What else can you see? An aberration. One soul is smoother than the other. Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the missing hardy boy. Wonder who he is. Mm. Oh, this one's easy. Way too easy. Oh. It's a driver. A driver would wear down their right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. And remember that abandoned lorry cabin we found. With a piece of sandpaper glued to the throttle. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses as his eyes light up with excitement. Dude, the fact that we, because we explored the lorry, that comes in and if, dude, I love the way, because we could have maybe gotten lucky and checked out these footprints on day one, but because we've waited and we've also had, the, we've checked out the Union boys, we've investigated the lorry, the dialogue accounts for that. It's very impressive stuff. I just love the when games are more immersive and reactive to our choices instead of glossing over things we've done and we're like, oh, that's a little bit weird, but you excuse it because it's a video game. It's all the more impressive when subtle actions you take actually get acknowledged. It's awesome. Which means that the missing lady driver was also present at the lynching? That's it. She's the old soul. Plot thickens with that one. First the drug smuggling, now this. How deep does this rabbit hole go? Now we know who is the missing eighth person at the lynching. Do you think that Hardy and his boys could also be involved in the drug operation? I think the entire union is involved. Maybe even all of Martinez look around suspiciously. We should start with Status Hardy. See what he's got to say on the matter. This might throw them off. Work in our advantage. Damn. So what else? How old do you think these tracks are? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller, who reported the hanging. You're right. It is not impossible. How do you know visual calculus? I pulled last week's oh, no, for Kim. <laughs> Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last warm day. Mm. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What do you think happened here? What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. They all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. So far, so good. Only one thing missing. He looks at the tracks, face lighting up from the realization. Of course, there were eight tracks, but there are only seven Hardy Boys. Let him have his moment of joy. There's one pair missing from the Union box, the eighth pair. I'm going to say it was our old soul. So, the odd soul was present at the lynching, but isn't in the mess hall right now. Yes. I doubt the Hardys are going to tell us much, but we should still confront them about the possible drug trade connection. All right, we've been through all of it. Not bad, Kim. Not bad. Okay. So we can we can confront Titus with a little bit more information. We're right here. We're right here. So before I dart off in the other direction, 
Let's do that. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. That's right, Titus. We're not going anywhere right now, buddy. Now, guess what? I've connected you to the local drug trade. Goddamn. I've found eight sets of footprints, but there's only seven of you. Where is the eighth hardy boy? What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us, and we're all here. Son, I, I don't know what you, who you think you're talking to, but I've got a lot of authority here, and there is an eighth hardy boy, and it's a lady hardy boy, if you know what I mean. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. I don't want a job for you, Titus. I want to know who the eighth lady hard boy is. Actually, boss... We've been talking, and we think she could maybe... Sis, Glenn. Glenn spilt the beans. Fuck you, Glenn. This person Glenn wants to hire, he really respects her. Yeah. She? So there's an eighth Hardy, and it's a Hardy girl. Yeah, dude. Who might it be? Elizabeth? The gardener? I don't think Elizabeth the gardener slash not gardener slash annoying person is not our lady driver, but... You know, reaction speed, settle down. Bit too quick. Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want, cop? You get a little bit rattled there, Titus? So, let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? Got him! That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boy's matter. Nothing to do with your shit. And, and, he points to the lieutenant, you're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Okay. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. I love Kim. There's no point in pushing it further, he thinks. This is already a victory. We'll learn more about this eighth hardy sooner or later. There's still 3%. Guess what? I've connected you to the local drug trade, Titus. Like hell you have. There is no local drug trade. This place is as clean as a rifle. Go back to Jamrock and ask the local junkies how clean your streets are in Precinct 41 Kilo. We'll do that. In the meantime, did you know that there's an abandoned lorry at the intersection that was used to move raw ingredients for drugs from Terminal B to Jamrock? The person driving it was present at the hanging. It was one of you. We've connected the footprint. Detective, do you want to deliver the coup de grace? Hmm. <laughs> no, the thunder is his. Leave it to the lieutenant. You're right, there is no local drug trade except you point at Titus. Do the honor. You've earned it. No, I want. I need to get some authority. You're right. There is no liquid drug trade, except you. That's a mighty interesting theory. I guess that's what you would need to do theoretically. A big, strong, state-run monopoly would outcompete the runs on the street. Yeah, man. Theoretically. That's what you would do. To get rid of the gangs, the dealers, even some of the junkies. You would need good, trustworthy people to take their place, of course. Hardy men to run such a monopoly. For the good of the community, of course. This is disgusting. You're admitting to profiting off of poisoning your own people. Boo fucking who? People will always be taking drugs. Might as well do it clean and organized. So admitting to the lynching, admitting to the drug trade, without much of a push? Yeah, that's what the labor movement is all about. Clean and organized. And the Hardy Boys are running it. Elizabeth's mighty quiet. Theoretically, of course. We're just talking <laughs> politics here. My answer to your drug accusation is, how dare you? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Titus, 
Why fuck myself when you're right here? I'm gonna fuck you, buddy. Not quite yet, Mr. Hardy. There were eight sets of prints on the crime scene. There are only seven Hardy boys here. The eighth Hardy, the one who's missing. She runs this thing, right? She's the hardest of them all. My answer is fuck off. Mind your own business. There is no eighth Hardy. I run this goddamn scene. I think we upset his his uh his big ego. Finally, you got something out of him. This could prove useful in the future. And here we go. Back to the usual. That's what you chime in with, Elizabeth? I know, I know. Fatty walked on all fours. He's so fucking fat, he left two sets of footprints. <laughs> go fuck your mom, Dennis. <laughs> That's more like it, boys. You heard him. It was Angus on all fours. Anything else you need to know? Still 3%. I'm going to take off now. Not bad. Not bad. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. We've done a lot of authoritative questioning by uh, 10.30 in the morning, I think. Pretty crazy. Uh, and I did that all without realizing I've got my stupid little minus authority ledger on. And we still did it. Oh, accident. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> I've picked a fascist option. That's the thing about this game, is sometimes when we look through the those list of choices, and you go, which one is the one that's the thing? And then you'll pick one, and you realize that it's actually not. And that's the way that this game tries to word things about uh, for you sometimes. It puts a bit of a spin on it. And sometimes you don't even realize what you're saying. There you go. We're going to wrap this one up by talking to Joyce. I'm going to wrap this one up by talking to Joyce and relaying her the information about the drug trade and what we've had to find out. Shadows in the water, green plants under the calm surface. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Oh, we can also talk about the tattoos, the photo of the thing. Nice. Um, do you know something about these tattoos? That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. Okay, so you know something about the tattoos. Better not tie the fourth day to the bat's day on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. Yes. She wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps her from it. Okay, so... I spoke with the lorryman at the roundabout. That's the one, I think. Yes, my yes. eyes on the harbour have sent word to that effect. What have you discovered? Okay. Wait. Where exactly are these eyes located? It doesn't really matter. And I do apologize for the surveillance. Wild pines can't afford to be blind at a time like this. Okay. In any case, it's a relief to know someone has looked into it. If I may ask, will there be an official investigation? I assume you discovered there is an operation. If there is an investigation, it will be part of an ongoing operation, subject to confidentiality. I am sure you understand. Of course, detectives. In any case, you've held up your end of our arrangement. I trust you with the rest. Now it's my turn. Yeah, it is. I wouldn't normally break protocol like this, but the situation demands it. If you don't solve this murder, I'm afraid we may have a bloodbath on our hands. The words bloodbath sound cold in her mouth. They taste of iron and strawberries. What was that about a bloodbath? Yes. I'm afraid this strike may descend into a small-scale civil war, with possible consequences for all of Rivershoal West. Since you are sharing that, this is also the RCM's worst-case scenario. Then we're on the same page, as grim as it may be. I've already heard about a connection between the lynching and strike, but I need your testimony. I have an indirect role to play, I'm sad to say. My employer experienced a momentary lapse of faith in me. In that moment, they elected to deploy a private military contractor as an insurance measure. They called it my security detail. Hmm. A momentary lapse of faith. They elected a private military contractor, so that would be tied to not only our victim who is dead, but also the one who most likely went asking questions after the event. A momentary lapse of faith. 
They were dispatched after I relayed the Union's initial offer. Every worker... A member of the board. I tried to convince ear. my employer it was simply a piece of rhetoric or a joke. They did not appreciate the humor. Do you need a security detail? Absolutely not. These mercenaries are muscle, pure and simple. They are meant to intimidate the Union into surrendering. Who are they, exactly? Cronel, an Oranese military company. As far as I know, three arrived in Martinez. They report to me sporadically, but they do not answer to me. To be frank, our relationship is deteriorating. But Joyce, you can't be frank. Because that's not your name. They wear ceramic armor, have semi-automatic weapons and years of combat experience. They also have trauma and stressor disorder, and no idea how to conduct themselves in an urban civilian environment. Mm -hmm. So, what happened? The story is, one of them, the Colonel, I don't know his real name, yeah. sexually assaulted a local woman while he was drunk and separated from his unit. This allowed some of the more militant Union members to subdue him. Damn, we really, okay, so we're really getting to this point where we're, we're, we're learning the shit. We're learning the shit. It's it's definitely we definitely get into it. He was taken out behind the whirling in rags and lynched last Sunday night. What then? Nothing. Mr. Clare refuses to let me into the harbor. I have not been able to discuss this matter with anyone there. The remaining two Cronell contractors carry out their orders for now. And that's the Crenel uh, contractors. For now. It's a smokescreen. In secret, they are conducting an independent military tribunal into the lynching. Once this investigation is concluded, executions will follow. What is the nature of this so-called investigation? Whether to execute one, some, or all of the Union militants. Okay. I have to say, this is not disco. It is very far from disco. My only hope is that you provide a single, concrete suspect before the mercenaries indiscriminately pick theirs. Simply put, if you don't pin this on someone good and do it fast, they will identify and execute everyone present at the lynching. This in turn will force the Union to respond. And this is the bloodbath. The Debardeur have over 2,000 men. It will be a thousand to one. God, coalition versus the... Revolution all over again. The Serais giant hornet, the world's second largest insect, can kill 40 honeybees a minute, while a group of 30 can decimate an entire hive of 20,000 bees in less than four hours. I accidentally pressed the spacebar twice, uh, so that skipped over Joyce's thing. So now Encyclopedia has basically just spoken out of context. Uh, Joyce just said, Have you ever seen a hornet invade a beehive, Lieutenant? She leans back. It's not pretty. Now Encyclopedia tunes in. And this is one of those moments where I really appreciate the UI, the user interface style for the dialogue. Because if you accidentally skip something, uh, you can just, you can see it. So you don't miss out and go, oh. Because imagine if you couldn't. And imagine if it just goes, the Debra Doors have over 2,000 men. It would be 1,000 to 1. And then your Encyclopedia just chimes in with information about the Ceres giant hornet. And you're like, eh? These men work in tandem using semi and fully automatic firearms. Their armor is virtually impenetrable to muzzle-loaded weapons, even yours. Most Union workers don't have guns at all. As I said, a bloodbath. See, Kim, this is that great bloodletting I've been telling you about. It appears you found it, yes, and I'm not happy for you. I can't see it happen. Too many things would have to go wrong first. Isn't this a pretty bleak scenario you're describing? Many bleak scenarios have already come true. Nameless, badgeless detective of the citizens' militia. Yeah, that's, that's true. I don't know who I am yet. Harry, no badge. All we can do is keep the rest from going the same way. One single concrete suspect delivered into civil court, and I may be able to defuse this situation. Okay. A single concrete suspect. Man, who would we get out of the group? Is it going to be Titus? Is it going to be the dude who threw him over the branch and hoisted him up there for the hanging? The man who threw the first punch, the last punch. What can you tell me about Crenel? 
Yes. I'm afraid this strike may descend into a small-scale civil war, with possible consequences for all of Rivershall West. Since you are sharing, ma'am, this is also the RCM's worst-case scenario. Then we're on the same page, as grim as it may be. It goes into that one again. Not much. Their public resume is relatively good, as far as private military contractors go. I believe they were once called Downwell. Oh, I picked the wrong option. <laughs> I th for, a, for a second, I was like, yeah, my brain just had a moment where I was like, wait, didn't I just pick it? But I, I picked the bloodbath one again. Uh, their public resume is relatively good as far as private military contracts go. They were once called Downwell. This checks out with the phone call, the radio call that we just had with Alice. Down a deep black well. Thank you, Inland Empire. They boast a long list of clients. Saint-Baptiste, Welchman Lorenz, Eintracht. A warning sign, however. The operations concerned all take place in third or fourth world countries. Guarding facilities, escort missions and such. Meaning they are used to operating in war zones. Yes. All the good conflict corridors, Supramundi, Yesut, the Seminese Islands, countries that don't have a good record reporting atrocious military conduct on their soil. Okay. Anything else you got on them? Sadly, no. Before this happened, I had little interest in them. Now that I do, I don't have the resources. She thinks. If you still have access to the ICP's database, you could run a better background check than I ever could. It may take some time, though. Guess what? I'm doing it already. Do you know a lot about the inner workings of the RCM and the ICP, ma'am? In my line of work, it pays to do your research. I was prepared to deal with the RCM. I did not think I'd be dealing with a group like Crenell. Could you contact the company and tell them to call them off? I have. And they will. However, these orders take time to reach what is basically a rogue unit out in the field here. Until they do, it's all on us. You said the deceased assaulted a woman? Or he didn't. This is information passed on to me from some teenagers loitering around the canal. I cannot testify by it. Who did the passing on then? The remaining contractors. Their tribunal. It's what they believe. What do these teenagers by the canal say? That the man was killed because he assaulted a local woman. I've asked around a bit. This seems to be the accepted story around Martinez. Okay. The lieutenant consults his notebook, his eyebrows knitted in concentration. Odd. Uh, we haven't heard any reports about an assault in connection with the lynching. Where did it take place? And when? Last Sunday night, at the Whirling in Rags, the hostel by the gates. Supposedly, the colonel was drunk, maybe on narcotics too. Mm -hmm. Either way, he's alleged to have sexually assaulted a woman. Sometime later, a group of dock workers got their hands on him. And who was this woman? That's a good question, officer. I don't have the slightest idea. As I said, it's a rumor. About a rumor. In any case, it's what the Colonel's remaining colleagues believe. You meet her soon enough, you feel. Okay. This Colonel, the one who was hanged, did you know him? If you mean, did I see him alive? Yes. But I did not know him. And his name was? Lerly. His service name. A nom de guerre, most likely. He wouldn't divulge his full name. Only one of them did. A bad sign if there ever was one. Okay. Tell me about the others first. He was 40. Oops. Or 50. It's hard to say which. He had a combat injury on his lower jaw. It made it difficult to estimate his age, or gauge his facial expressions. Okay. So I clicked asking to know about Lely. What else? Nationality? Accent? He was, uh, Occidental, I think. Like brown hair, a mixed accent. Oranese. Or Missinian, maybe. His injury gave him an accent all his own. Okay, so... We had the smoker on the balcony say it was slightly oranges and then go no it was definitely oranges so but it enough for a confusion or not enough to nail it down in a way it was humanizing he had to learn to speak through it through the injury and that's all i know i guess i only met him once okay and then if i could just do 
If you mean did I Lely. Tell me about the others first. One is a man. Corty, they call him. A nickname as well. The other a woman, Phyllis de Paul. Corty is the gunner, I believe. De Paul is a radio operator. What would you say was his eye color? The deceased. She closes her eyes, trying to picture the man's face, then shakes her head. I can't remember. It's a pang of regret to her voice. The lieutenant was testing her, asking a small detail first to see if she knew him better than she let on. She passed. That is very clever, Kim. That's smart. That's all right, man. Anything else? Nationality? What would you say was his age? He was 40. Okay, was this it? is the same. What else? Nationality? In a way, it was humanizing. Okay. He had to learn to speak through it. Where are the Who remaining are two mercs now? No, I guess. They've gone to ground, as it were. I don't recommend seeking them out. For one, they're almost certainly armed to the teeth. They don't have the same respect for the Revachol citizens' militia as I do. To put it bluntly, they think you're vigilantes, ghetto savages. It will not be a fruitful meeting. Uh, we still need to know. We, we still need to know where they are. You're likely to run into them eventually. When that happens, I'll be in a better position to mediate if I don't appear involved. Okay, eighty-three percent. Where are these mercenaries? One is obviously the scab leader at the harbor gates. The one chanting the idiotic slogans. He's barely maintaining his disguise. Oh, shit. Logic coming through with that reveal. Okay. The other has a vantage point in a building south of the roundabout. They were keeping tabs on you while you were canvassing the lorry drivers. Huh. One must be the goon in ill-fitting work clothes by the harbour gates, the scab leader. That's the whole thing about the clothes not being his own. When we were speaking to him... Damn it, that makes sense. That may be so. I still hope you heed my advice. There's no need to kick the hornet's nest. Okay. For all your talk of averting this catastrophe, the situation at the gate is a border keg. Does this not bother you? Of course it bothers me, Lieutenant. But my hands are tied. How would my employer react if it appeared I were intervening on behalf of the Union? Your concern may be appearances. Ours is keeping the peace. One is probably in a building overlooking the roundabout. That would afford a good vantage point. In any case, it's practically inaccessible. Where is your radio for contacting them, if I may ask? Do you have an earpiece? Heavens no. I'm not an undercover agent. There's a short wave at the ship's wheel. Okay. I had another question for you. I hope I can answer it better. How much time do we have? Until the executions start? Truthfully, I don't know. It depends on their progress identifying the members of the lynch mob and their impatience. They don't report their progress to you? Not on this matter. I'm afraid they consider this a personal initiative. Five days, not more. Maybe sooner. Okay. It's a matter of days. Not weeks. Yeah. Okay. We have to be. We have to be good with our time management. That's enough for now. I am sorry to have been the bearer of bad news. If there is anything else I can help you with, please ask. Now, can you tell me about these tattoos? Of course. Excuse my hesitation before. For about half a minute, in silence. It was taken with a trigger not long ago. This is the man's upper body. There were no more markings on his hands or legs. Stay quiet. Observe the woman's expression. Her mouth is relaxed. The accordion lines near her mouth vanish. The pearls of her eyes move slowly on the photo's surface. What do you think? Uh, sorry. I was trying to see if I can read the web of interdependencies between these points. The stars. I can't. But that's how you read this story. The points themselves don't have letters, numbers, anything. Their size, location on the body, and distance from each other tells you what they represent. Like blooms in a pattern. Close. Port cities. 
This is an Oranese map of the waterways, a sailor's tattoo worn by wayfarers of the Dolorian century. Over 300 years ago, the sailors would mark their bodies to map their travels. What is the use of this map? The sailor's soul would use it to fly back home if they should die abroad. This is a sort of contraption to be reeled back in by. The silver cord, they would call it. Where is he now? <laughs> okay. I've spoken to him. For now, the soul is fastened inside his corpse. That is precisely what the sailors feared when they drew these maps. A fear of drowning within one's own corpse. What travels did the dead man make? Quite a few. Vredefort, the Oranese capital, traditionally stands on the right shoulder. He started somewhere near here, I think. What next? Then he made his way to the Preto Grangi, through what I think must be the Stutz Canal, an artificial channel through the Occident. From the Preto, he sailed to the Insulindic Ocean, first the Semenese Islands, then this. She points to his heart. What is that? Revachol. Those are the two constants. Redefort on the shoulder and Revachol in the heart. They started the tradition of these maps right after the discovery of Insulinde, at the dawn of the Inter-Islary Age. The old, old world passing by, and the new, new world already here. You said you can't read it. I can't. This man was no sailor, and these are no ports. I can understand geographic fragments, but not their meaning. Who could tell me more? I wonder if that the woman up up there that does the graffiti might know some stuff just because of art. His platoon members? I don't know. <laughs> the other contractors. Though I do not suggest you go and show them that picture. This man was their friend and comrade. Surely there are other people to ask about the tattoo. This is not necessary to complete the task, officer. It's a dangerous side task. Search elsewhere. Dangerous side task. Not a good idea. I am relieved you think so. I don't think deciphering that tattoo should come before public security. Thanks. That's all for the tattoos. Thank you for your help. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yes, no, that's all for now. Wonderful. Three thoughts occur. Tremble. The time is now. Taola. Taola. What time? Time for the show. For Taola. The hallowed time of fear and disintegration. A countdown has begun. All will collapse on itself. The world will disappear into a single grain of blackness. All sound will be muted. All life will scream. Taola, what's that? Ulogu Theodos. Xino Zausin. Ipoli Osidien. Echondes Fronisin. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Wait, what? When did this countdown begin? Monday morning. The moment you arrived in this reality are the first crack in the sheer face of God. From you it will spread. God, man. Some of the lines in this game are just incredibly written. <laughs> this is because of the insane world ending I've been saying, isn't it? Yes. You spoke the words of the Palindropos and the houses of Pericarnassus. Items, people, even words will tumble. All will lose its meaning in the coming years. That is why you marked yourself. God, okay, half light. I'm pretty sure what this does is this just opts us into a thought, but we have to actually internalize and complete the thought to actually proceed with it. So I think it is a little bit of no harm done by just getting the thought at least to read about it, but we just don't have to do anything with it, I think. Are you sure it's not just a joke or some kind of coping mechanism? It's totally also a coping mechanism. I'm a little afraid. So you should be. The world island crumbles at your feet and in the far plain, Palindropos. Palindropos. Perhaps 
Just a thought. This has something to do with the hangover. I do think the world might end soon. If it's not this powder keg of a, of a city, it's gonna be the fact that the pale will consume us all. The face of the woman fractures. There will be herd killing. We all become vape. Cop of the apocalypse. Okay. Ah, oh, there was three and now there's only one. Completion of my the thought. Socioeconomics. Nice. Nought point nought 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 percent of communism has been built. Evil child murdering billionaires still rule the world with a shit eating grin. All he has managed to do is make himself sad. He is starting to suspect Krasmezov fucked him over personally with his socio-economic theory. It has, however, made him into a very smart boy with something like a university degree in truth. Instead of building communism, he now builds a precise model of this grotesque, duplicitous world. Okay, what's the bonus for that? Less authority. Left wing dialogue options give four XP. A motivation for doing a, an XP motivation for doing some left wing dialogue options as well. And minus one visual calculus, reaction, reaction everywhere, and minus one authority, downtrodden inver communist. Ooh, that minus one to authority, baby. I'm gonna have to just start putting some skill points into it, I think, to combat the every th every decision I do in this game. That brings it down. <laughs> we can also forget. We've got three skill points right now. So our authority really needs to be leveled up. I'm putting two in there. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. I'm putting two into authority. <laughs> Where's it coming from? From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights, and they solve shit. Okay. Actually, now that they hear superstar and law official in a sentence, they sound weird together. Yeah, that's me. I've been establishing my superstardom hard lately. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop. Dick Mullen. Salam Rocky Bayi. Badass on the edge disco cop. Time to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera. Lights. Wait, what's this about a ludicrous fantasy world? Yeah, you know. Beneath it is just heartbreak. A pulmonary tract infection. Atherosclerotic disease. This is where you say action and reconceptualize all that. Reinvent it as the world's first celebrity police officer. This is the beginning of your legend. Fuck it. Action! With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you and you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. Okay, so copy the apocalypse and some kind of superstar. You woke up in a hotel room and started rambling about the end of the world. It's not your normal everyday doom crying either. Something truly colossal is approaching. The gloaming, the culling, the bloodletting of unimaginable proportions. Until now you've been pleasantly vague about the precise nature of this cataclysm. No more. Put the bloodletting on the burner and really figure out what's threatening the fragile physical reality you just found yourself in. Minus one rhetoric, rambling madman for almost seven hours, and some kind of superstar. Minus two logic, still seems unlikely. Only for an hour. Let's make this absolutely clear. No one is saying you're an actual superstar in the groupies and cocaine riddled with hepatitis C strikes a lioness pose with a mic kind of way. You're not Guillaume Le Million or Davy Jewess. No, you're a metaphorical superstar. You bring that rock and roll authenticity and passion to a line of work where people don't expect or want to see it, where some would say it doesn't belong. Law enforcement. More thoughts. More thoughts. But we will have to think on those thoughts and check our journal and see what we have to do another time. We will bring this episode of Disco Elysium to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's really nice. It's really nice building up this officer profile, isn't it? 
I'm liking what's going on. This was a great episode for information. This was one where we definitely got some progress on the actual case about the murder, why we are actually here. But you must ask yourself in that same vein of questioning, why are we actually here? Where are we really? Let's think on that. Let's internalize those thoughts and I'll come back next time for more Disco Elysium. Thank you so much. I'll see you then.